So Jess, thank you for coming on. Um, this is one of the first times that I'm glad that my mum's very nosy and likes to talk to people because I actually made the connection with you through my mum on the flight. She she got off and she told me that she was with someone who looked very sporty <laughs> on the plane. And then little did we know that she was sat next to Olympic gold medalist Jess Learmont. So thank you for being chatty with her as well. And I hope she wasn't too much for you. <laughs> Oh no, it was, it was really nice. Uh, I know it's so random that I've ended up here on your podcast because uh, yeah, your mum was chatting to me. But no, she was looking <laughs> see me limping to the to the toilet and back, and we just got time. And uh, it made the time pass really quickly because the, the airport was the queue was so long. Uh, but yeah, yeah we had a lovely chat actually. She was she's so nice. So, um, lovely. Well, before we get into it, I'd like to ask a few warm-up questions. So I've got five for you today. First one, I can sort of imagine the answer, considering you're a triathlete. But first question is, do you prefer running fast or lifting heavy? Running fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I presume that's what you thought I'd say. Um, triathletes in the gym, it's in, like... Thankfully, we have our own gym. But, like, mm -hmm. if you ever have to go to public gyms, you should see us. Because we're just doing like little toe taps and pathetic, <laughs> <laughs> like plyometric stuff. And I think people look at us and say, what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. What's your favourite meal to have after a competition? We usually go for a like, dirty burger, burger oh, and chips. Nice. Yeah, it's kind right. of a normal, in our little friendship group for triathletes, we always, we always find a nice burger place. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, what's your go-to training song? Ooh, that's a good... Do you know what? I don't really... It's funny because I, I'm a bit weird. I listen to, like, Celine Dion and write slow music. I know you're going to think of this. <laughs> um, and I actually do a lot of my hard sessions to, like, really slow Celine Dion sort of music. But if I did want to come across as not a complete loser, uh, I'd probably say, like, Fleetwood Mac. The rumours album, which is, <laughs> which is, yeah, which is very slightly better. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more upbeat, hey? A little bit, Okay, yeah. next one. Do you prefer team events or individual events? Because I know you've done a lot of the Super League events, which look really good fun, and obviously your gold medal was in the relay. Yeah. So, but do you prefer competing with a team or individually? Um, It's funny, because I used to play football and stuff as well, and I enjoyed that in a team. But yeah, in triathlon terms, definitely individual. There's too much pressure in the team event. You can you yeah. know, mess it up for others. Whereas football, <laughs> like, if you make a mistake, you don't really notice. But yeah, in triathlon, <laughs> it's more <laughs> obvious. So I'd say individual in triathlon, anything mm -hmm. else for the team. Cool. And last question, if you were going to go on holiday, would you want to go to the beach or to the lakes? Ooh, lakes probably yeah yeah I love the lakes nice. yeah so okay so I think that one of the most impressive parts of your story is that you got into triathlons fairly late compared to most people mm. could you talk about your first triathlon competition and how you got into it yeah sure so like you said I got into it late I literally was just at work when they did like a charity charity triathlon that just decided to do it there was literally five of us in the it was supermarket at the time um and I took it deadly serious I remember thinking <laughs> god I've got to win this <laughs> like no one else can, couldn't care less um so I did that and I, I did win it because to be fair I used to be like a national swimmer um mm -hmm. and I quit when I was like 16 um so I kind of had an advantage over everyone else because most people if they do travel and they kind of swim but not much whereas I were like keen swimmer um so yeah I just did that one and um really loved it mm -hmm. I, you know just thought it was such a little challenge it really a tiny one we literally did like just a few lengths in the pool and do you know what I mean it, it wasn't a proper event um, so it kind of got me the bug and I decided to do the exact same triathlon um, in the actual, sorry, in Tadcaster where it was, where the where my job was. There was an actual official triathlon, which we kind of copied, but shortened. Um, so I decided to do that and again, loved it and got the bug and ended up doing more and more. And like anyone does, you know, like I was 
enjoying it like people do marathons or whatever for a challenge I mm-hmm. I kind of did that and then it really just snowballed and I ended up going to the Olympic game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was, it's been such an, a bizarre journey. Like it's probably about 10 years now that I've been doing it, but I kind of look back and think, what, like, how did that happen? Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's, it's been mad. Yeah. So how old were you when you did the first one? So when I did my first one, I reckon I was 22, but I kind of, didn't actually officially get going to like 23 you know like I did one mm-hmm. and then didn't really do anything so like when I was about 23 I kind of decided I'd start training properly for it but I was still working at the time um so yeah about 23 which and then did you join a club when you realized that you liked it or would you were you just training by yourself yeah no I never joined the club um I because I was at work it's really difficult you know like trying to mm-hmm. do things around um your work schedule and stuff so no I just did a bit of masters I literally swam once a week and then rode my bike with my partner John and um like local people around here and then just went for runs from my house so nothing that specific um and then I started to do like European races and stuff and yeah it's while I was working so we had to save up I mean John was skinny Mm. Uh, yeah it's such an expensive sport with oh. bikes in particular <laughs> it's stupid like just yeah. equipment and then you'd have to travel to I think the first one I did was like in Portugal mm-hmm. and traveling there and then you know you, you come in like I don't know fifth and getting about 200 pound prize when you think like <laughs> 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 right yeah um so yeah did that and uh but yeah, I, I, I kind of enjoyed doing everything on my own. I didn't really join clubs, so I was a bit of a learner. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned that you were a swimmer when you were younger. So when you used to swim, did you have goals to go to the Olympics with that swimmer, which obviously requires a lot of training to go into that? Oh, yeah. So from a young age, I was swimming like nine times a week, ten times a week while I was mm-hmm. at school. Um, and it took over my life, like... Oh God! I remember being fifteen, sixteen. My mates were all starting to rebel it and go out, go out on the town, and be like, "You come in!" I think, "Are you joking?" I've been up since four o'clock this morning swimming. Yeah, There's absolutely no way. So it got to the point where it, I wasn't enjoying it. You know, I would go in and mm-hmm. I kind of kept doing it because I was, I was good at it, and it was like ruining my social life. Um, so I decided that I'd quit and. Um, like leave it all behind so um I can't remember the original question I do this a lot you know? I know <laughs> it was did you have did you have goals to like go to them that was it yeah sorry so, no. <laughs> <laughs> honestly it happens all the time um I didn't because I'd I never thought I'd be good enough and I, I don't think mm-hmm. I would have in swimming swimming's so difficult and it's really yeah. technical and I think mm-hmm. you've either got it or you haven't so I I kind of knew that I would never go to the Olympics. And to be honest, I wasn't even bothered. And yeah. to this day, it sounds stupid. And like, obviously, I've been to the Olympics now. And I never was, it was never a target of mine or a name. I never really thought about it. I don't know whether that's because I'm a bit of a, a doylem and I don't really have aims and goals and I should be more structured. But yeah, it, I never never thought about it and it's really weird because when you go to the olympics you get questions all the time about like have you dreamt to this since you're a kid and you're like <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> it's, as if it, it's like kind of disrespectful in a way well i feel like it's been disre- disrespectful but no I but i think that's why you've done well though because it's never been a pressure on yourself you know a lot of people because you broke your back you know what five months before the olympics mm. But it was never, since it was never a big goal for yours, I guess if it was threatened, you wouldn't feel as disappointed as someone who's dreamt of it for years and years and years. Yeah, definitely. And I think I see it all the time in in, in athletes and sports people, the amount of pressure they put on themselves. And I'd just love to take that away from them, you know, and just say, listen, just enjoy it and see how we go because I think mm-hmm. a lot of people would perform so much better that if they just had that kind of well it's triathlon you know like if yeah you do very well <laughs> no one cares. like yeah it's not like someone's gonna die if you make a mistake or mm. you, know, you 
don't put your hat in your box and you get a penalty. <laughs> but people like they're so in 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 invested in it and too right like if the, the amount of training we have to do like 30 hours every week mm-hmm. you've not really got a social life it's quite intense mm-hmm. I guess you've got to kind of have that like pressure on yourself because you wouldn't do it otherwise so it is really it's a, it's a hard balance but I think I'm just way swaying over the other one like oh well <laughs> what's <laughs> And it helps that John is not into triathlon or mm-hmm. he's not an athlete. He's, he's a, a gas man and we live like a normal life. So it's great because I'll, I'll say to him and he's like, Jess, if you don't, if you don't have a good race, don't, don't worry about it. And I think, mm. yeah, well, actually. And do you know, so he helps me, I think, with that. Yeah. So you went, so you were working in the supermarket. Which one was it, by the way? Which well, it was Sainsbury's. It's weird because... Yeah. After Sainsbury's, I did I did personal training, a little bit of personal training and worked mm-hmm. uh, as a fitness instructor. But as the years have gone on, that, do you know the story when, because I think <laughs> they like to go, like, get hung up on the Sainsbury's uh, supermarket tale. Um, <laughs> I'm living a lie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, I, it was a bit of both. I went to Sainsbury's, then went to the gym. But yeah. So you're working full time. And then how did you go from earning money through employment than to earning money through competing in sponsorships was it a hard decision for you and did you feel like that put more pressure on you needing to perform well um it was a decision that was made very easy actually because I was I was at the gym working on minimum wage like Mm -hmm. oh god you know not earning much at all yeah um and my coach at the time who was my my dad's friend he's friend heard about me and um Ray had been chatting to him and he um had a business uh, tailor made timber and he decided that he'd help me out and say right you can go full time and I'll I'll pay your wage so I was like what you know you just think you're kidding this yeah. is unbelievable <laughs> he's just like out of the good of his you know he want wanting loads of advertisements and let's face it it won't get him much out of me I was literally a girl from Leeds <laughs> done not like very little craft one but I think uh Ray had kind of said like I can see something in Jess you know talent or whatever and I think she might be good at this and he just off his own back and said right well I'll help her so I went full-time um due to Doug and within like a year of my performance just you know I, I were doing way better because obviously I were going from swimming once a week to swimming mm-hmm. as much as I want every day um yeah. so then after that I kind of I eventually got on funding you know lottery funded athletes like mm-hmm. GB team basically um but I kind of blagged that as well because I got on as a, um, a pilot so like a domestic you know so that you'd help the better athletes at Olympic right. Games because sometimes they take people to swim and buy cards so then mm-hmm. kind of help someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. So I kind mm-hmm. of got on the program as a domestic, um, which was fine for me. I, I got all the perks of like medical and going on camps and learning from mm-hmm. people. And then it kind of just snowballed. Eventually, I got on from my own merit. So um, it's been funny, but if I hadn't I got that like help from Doug I wouldn't I literally would not be where I am today which is mm. is mad isn't it that someone can be so nice and help you like that it's bizarre yeah so you there so you're sponsored you're training how many hours a week when you, when you don't have to work to get money um so we range from like 25 to 30 hours a week um and is that so this might be a silly question but is that like swim bike run every day or do you separate them? It varies. So, yeah, it, it works out that you nearly do swim, bike, run every day. <laughs> um, <laughs> plus gym. So we do gym twice a week. Um, so, yeah, that's just in general. But, you, you know, you just do long rides, short runs, brick sessions, stuff like that. Uh, but, yeah, yeah swim five times a week. And if you didn't have the goal of, like, going to the Olympics in your mind, what's pushing you through those sessions? Because, I mean, I used to swim competitively when I was younger and we used to do lactic production sets where we would all be sick and it was just horrific and it was so brutal and again I did it twice a day for years 
but I can't even imagine the level that you like how hard you must have pushed yourself to get to the level that you're at today so so what what got you through those sessions I it's it's really quite difficult to answer because I know it sounds it does sound weird not having like the aim of the Olympics because obviously that's what most people think about every day mm. but I think I that is what I love so I love pushing myself to the to the absolute maximum so like when I broke my back it wasn't so much the training that I missed because I did a lot of like faffing about getting back from rehab um it was the actual try like I love having hard sessions and like you say just killing yourself mm-hmm. and it's weird because that's what I enjoy so without even needing a name that is something that I like to do mm-hmm. in a session if I had a, an hour of run say like let's say I've retired and I've finished I know that I'll end up doing sessions for no reason. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because I just love the feeling of exerting yourself and seeing how hard you can push and, and, and really pushing that barrier. So I think it's a bit weird, but that's what that's what I like. John, my partner, thinks I'm an absolute psycho. <laughs> <laughs> just like, if I could do a, a ride, that's the bit he'd take out. You know, he likes just trotting around going to mm. that way I'm like oh no let's just go really hard and he's like no <laughs> what are you doing yeah so I just think I'm kind of that's I, I don't know if it's the swimming from a young age like like you'll know you you can just every day you were getting pushed so hard because you mm. don't have the the worry of you I don't know muscles breaking down or bones breaking from impact yeah. um in swimming so you just try mm-hmm. out you know that's all you do when you're younger so I don't know if it's been drilled into me from a young age and then yeah. I can't switch off but yeah I just like I just like really pushing that <laughs> yeah that. For, for me when I stopped swimming I didn't actually like go back in the pool for about three years so I stopped in 2016 and I just thought of swimming I hated it I had fun and I know it upset my yeah. parents because like even when we'd go to the beach, I just wouldn't want to go in the sea. And then That's I didn't so want to push myself hard, came to uni, uh, just went to the gym and did like bodybuilding stuff. And then now I've found CrossFit. So that's where I like to push myself. Um, but was that the same for you when you stopped swimming? That's surf when it exactly the same. I didn't touch a yeah. pool for six years, I don't think. I didn't even go <laughs> near it. Like the thought, like exactly the same as you. If somebody yeah. said you love swimming, I'd be like, absolutely not. Like yeah, nothing. and and not only that, I didn't like you. Didn't really push myself in sport. Me and John went traveling. I I, mm-hmm. I didn't do exercise at all, really, which is so bizarre. Because like you say, you, but I think yeah, so you literally run down from it, aren't you? It's it mm-hmm. so much when you're such a, a young age, you, you don't realize that it was just killed you. So I was yeah, with him, yeah just literally did nothing. Became complete bum in the world of like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah. Work, but yeah a bum in sport and then I've obviously found it later on and don't get me mm-hmm. wrong I still hate swimming like I would I don't mind going with the group and we do a session together but I definitely prefer the hard sessions like the days that we do like aerobic thank god mm. so boring um, yeah so I still have that but I kind of get through it because you've just got to do it and you for triathlon sadly but um yeah I uh it is weird how you have a break from it I think your mind just needs that like switch off yeah so at what point did it become likely or realistic that you could go to the Olympics personally I didn't even think I'd go until it would probably be two years before if we don't count the Covid year um, so like 2018 time yeah no well probably 20 yeah 20 end of 2018 yeah it was yeah yeah um I had a really good year I don't know where it came from I feel like it was I don't know I'd, I'd been kind of building to it but I never expected it myself and then um I had some results that I just thought flipping heck and then all of a sudden I realized that I was like one of the only two that had just kind of nearly hit criteria and I thought flipping heck it just came out of the blue I know that sounds so stupid and I, but I never believed in myself that I'd be going to the Olympics. And I do think that it doesn't matter. So, like, 
I could have planned these races and thought, right, I need to do well at this race, this race, this race, and then I've got a chance of going. But in my mind, I go to every race and I try as hard as I can anyway. So planning doesn't make a difference in my life. So like, <laughs> if I just do as best as I can, I get to the end of the year, my results will, will speak for themselves. So I don't need mm-hmm. to be like, kind of structured and, and putting my eggs all in one basket. Obviously, I do a little bit with tapering and things like that, but not so much. So I kind of just float my way through life and, and not put any like pressure on myself or, or mm. it sounds like I'm very disorganized, which I probably am. <laughs> I'm making it sound like I like to be relaxed, but in fact, I'm just really disorganized. <laughs> Well, it just sounds like you, you train as hard as you can in training and you compete as hard as you can in a competition and what will be will be. Yeah. And, I, you know, you're not getting stressed about, like, if you've tried your best but you come last, whatever, you've put everything yeah. in. So, That's yeah, exactly. but, I mean, I think it's really good that you see it that way because I can imagine that a lot of competitive athletes just get too caught up in the end game rather than what's going to get them there. Exactly, and... What all they can do is control the controllables that, that, that's yeah. linked to the race, isn't it? So thinking about the end result is not is actually probably going to make things worse than that. in fact just focusing on each week as it comes and going mm-hmm. day by day. And you certainly have to with triathlon because one minute you can do a run session one day, the next day you can't run because you've got an injury. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, it can be within a flash. So mm-hmm. you've just got to treat it here and now. And I do that a lot, but I kind of. Um, I think as I get older and triathlon, like, you know, the older I get and it's likely that I'll be retiring, I kind of need to <laughs> forward think a little bit more or else yeah. I'll just be sat there like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so speak, speaking about controlling the controllables, you were, you were meant to go to the Olympics 2020 and you did, but obviously COVID happened March 2020, so the Tokyo Olympics were postponed mentally how did that affect you because you found out you were going and then all of a sudden it might have been happening then it might not how did you do um to be honest it, it was a weird one because I think I, I'd followed COVID from the very first when we, we were in Australia actually in January and for some reason I was just like a little geek on Twitter and you know like seeing <laughs> what was so I kind of foresaw it not not saying that you know scientists over here, but <laughs> I just, I already thought there's absolutely no way it's going. You know it's happening. I, I, so I, I kind of I think just week by week I gradually told myself it's not going to happen. Um, mm-hmm. So when it did get postponed, it wasn't like a big shock. You know, I'd kind of thought, well, I knew that was going to happen, um, and and all that was fine. Like I, I can deal with that, um, and I was a bit kind of at the back of my mind thinking, right, let's think about this. If this doesn't happen, what's the likelihood that I'm going to go to Paris? Because at this time I was 33. So I'm thinking, I can just imagine it would be my luck that, you know, <laughs> I'd get to the Olympic Games and then it won't go ahead. So that was a bit of a uncertain time. But, do you know, like when we were in it, COVID, you, you just thought to yourself, there's, there's worse things happening in the world. And there was one, though, mm-hmm. you know, like, I always try and think of it could be worse and the could be worse was a lot worse. So um, I found it fairly easy to be like, well, whatever. Uh, but the the thing that I probably found the hardest was at points they were deciding whether they would reselect. So obviously mm-hmm. I reselected for the Olympics um, because British triathlon likes to do that because of the heat and, you know, so you can really – kind of focus on it and get your heat prep done and stuff like that rather than find out last mm-hmm. minute and like, oh, it's going to be really hot, I need to plan. Um, so they like to pre-select and they decided that they might unselect us and then you'd have to all re-race. And I was thinking, oh, God, <laughs> how cool would that be if you, you know, later on you got deselected just because mm. you had like one bad race or whatever. Um, so I think that that was quite stressful. Um, but then all this kind of just went by the by once I broke my back. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you break your back? Um, I fell off my bike randomly, just mountain biking, yeah, and uh, kind of like put my like leg out and it just jolted mm-hmm. up my um, 
of my hips so it was like my sacrum area mm -hmm. um and it came on within like a week it went from being fine to like extreme pain so i crashed and then it didn't come on to later because you run on it and stuff um mm -hmm. so then that was quite hard mentally i think i'm very laid back normally and this one thing was like the end of the world for me sort of thing and uh but I do think that now I've got through that and I got to the Olympic Games and I was able to perform, now I feel like I can deal with anything, any injury. Do you know, like, it's really, yeah. I've learned a lot from it. So, because mm -hmm. it was my first kind of bone injury, first major injury I've ever had. So, um, ra really good time to do it, do you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you broke your back. And then did you have to do rehab for it in physio? How long did it take oh. you from breaking it to then going back to full training? Oh, so long. Um, I think I had about 14 weeks off running. Um, mm -hmm. And then it was all, yeah, really faffy stuff. You know, swimming, I was allowed to swim, but I had to pull and band for literally mm. about two, three months. Um, cycling, I, couldn't, I could cycle, but nothing hard over certain watts. Uh, loads of rehab in the gym so yeah it was quite it was quite mentally draining but at the same time I was kind of panic training so like mm -hmm. it was weird because I could have potentially been fitter because of the injury than I would have done any, if I hadn't got injured because mm -hmm. every session meant there's so much you know like because I had yeah. new sessions to do I made sure every session counted so mm. I don't know whether I tried harder because I knew I was needed to be fit and I felt like I wasn't as fit or, mm. you know, like I could have just been like not trying as hard and kind of floating through. Uh, so it's interesting and it does make me think that when people are injured, you shouldn't stress too much because it doesn't take that much to get back. But mm -hmm. at the time when you get injured, you just think oh, the world's going to end and you'll never get as fit and you blah 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 but in actual fact it's never that bad mm -hmm. so you get to the olympics what's it like because i mean there are so many of the food being amazing and the accommodation you were there in covid times so were you allowed to mix with other athletes or not it's a weird one because british triathlon always like it's as if british british triathlon knew about covid about God knows how many years ago. They never, they never have their athletes in the athletes village. So we always have our own hotel anyway, and they always have their own staff and meals because the amount of times that athletes have gone to the Olympics and got ill from a stomach mm -hmm. or whatever. So we've always done that. So even if it weren't COVID time, it probably feel like we were in COVID time. So <laughs> we didn't actually mix with anybody. We was in our own in our own hotel, but. It was quite extreme. Um, mm -hmm. We were actually treated as if worse than the athletes that were in the village because we were outside their controllables. You know, we were trying to control ourselves in our own hotel, yeah. but they were seeing us as a threat in terms of... Coping. Right, yeah. Because they don't know what we're doing, whereas they know what everyone's mingling in the, in mm -hmm. the athlete's village. So it, we only stayed about 800 metres away from the race site and they wouldn't even let us walk like you know just walk down the street we had to get a taxi <laughs> it was so stupid we wow. banged. It were so it was a really strange time um and we got to go to the village just for one day to experience mm -hmm. it and walk around and it seemed fairly normal um other than like in the in the food hall as you imagine we we went to experience that because it is quite good having all the different nationalities of food mm. there. and i love food I'm right, <laughs> in and you know, like so. It was like yes, um, but they they had like um, screens, clear screens around every single seat, so it were nice. Wow. You even have a this like you try to talk to the person opposite or next to you. Couldn't even. Hear them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's a small price to pay in it, and uh, mm -hmm. like I said, we only did it for a day. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, it was very. I think it was more depressing that for japan than anything mm -hmm. else because we where yeah. we stayed we we look overlooked like the it was like a supporters um you know where people i can't remember what you called it now where people would go that were uh, got tickets to events but they'd just sit there and have drinks and watch the tv while they were there mm -hmm. it's called something like supporters um venue or something yeah anyway, <laughs> they were massive mm -hmm. all set up 
nobody there. It literally dead. Yeah. And it was just, it's just so sad because they obviously planned mm-hmm. for it all and nobody came. And it, it, it was just a bit depressing. Yeah. So yeah. you competed as an individual at Tokyo. What distance triathlon did you do? What, what, so what's the swim, bike and run distances? It's a standard. So it's 1,500 metre swim, it's like a mm-hmm. mile. Uh, 40k bike and then a 10k yeah. run and what was your time for that oh I don't know we don't do times in total because it's always a bit oh different. right yeah like so you do split times for uh, each we don't really do any no we don't do, you know like we don't kind of say that we did I'd say I did a 32 run I wouldn't say yeah. that's or whatever because the the course is yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, we do. Oh, right. Of course, yeah. Mm-hmm. So where did you come as an individual? Nine. And how did you feel about that? Um, I didn't have a good race, personally. Uh, mm-hmm. I struggled with my breathing. And there was a few little different bits. But I was delighted when I finished the yeah. one because I just thought, God, this is amazing. It's funny because mm-hmm. I remember because I was having such a bad run. Uh, it was just one of those days where you were stuck, I don't know if you've had it before, you're stuck in one gear and you can't, there's nothing mm-hmm. you can do, you're just plodding along. <laughs> People are <laughs> no, you know, there's no response. Hi. <laughs> you're all right, yeah. <laughs> don't worry, I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> I'm at this pace, that's it. Um, and I really just said, well, just enjoy it. And I know it sounds stupid because there were literally <laughs> nobody there. But I just were running around thinking, oh my god i'm at the olympic games this is mental mm. uh, maybe i should have been thinking about you know trying to recover and breathe better but i want i was just really soaking it in and i just thought this is unbelievable i'm at the olympic mm. games so then when i crossed the finish line i've said before it's so weird because we all race together through like world series the amount of times we race against literally all the same people and it was the weirdest after race I've experienced. Cause people were just like crying or fuming or, you know, then there's like the three that came first, second and third are obviously celebrating. I thought, this is so bizarre. Like, let's just all, like, we've done it. You know, we've it, it, you might not have mm. the result you want. And I certainly didn't. It's probably my worst result in a year, like a year and a half um, before that. So I, I just thought, fucking black. Like, just enjoy it and it was just really bizarre to see people were just fuming I think like I yeah. said to you before, I tried my best I literally couldn't mm-hmm. have gone any harder I came ninth it's not what I wanted but I could like there's nothing I can do about it so just enjoy. yeah I can imagine it comes down to like the Olympics is a four-year cycle and obviously it was five years for you yeah. and everything is to do with the Olympics for most of these athletes so yeah. when it's over it's I mean I'm not going to say maybe not depression is the right word but you would just it would feel like a, an immense low because you just think well yeah. this is it four years for yeah definitely for, and it's done now yeah and that is a massive thing and I don't think people realize the the sort of mental health around Olympic mm-hmm. Games you know because people just have the view of yeah it's a sport and I do get that like it is sport and like I try to think of like positives around that, but there is a lot of people that, like you say, they've worked all the life, well, four years, five years, but even more to go to Olympic Games. And I guess if you have an issue or something didn't go to plan, it could be quite depressing. Thing yeah, but, but but also like as someone who's not an athlete, like so if, if I go to work, as soon as I get home, my job's done. But for you, your training... And then every minute, so your food, your sleep, your recovery, everything is around your sport. So, yeah. yes, it, it is sport and it is for entertainment. And it is fun to watch, but it is also every single thing that you guys have to do. So, I mean, it's amazing what what you've achieved and it's unbelievable. Ah, oh, thanks. Love. But yeah, it is a big dedication. And do you know what? It's weird because when you can't do sports, say you're injured or whatever, mm-hmm. it's so bizarre seeing family and things like that because it's it's kind of people say it's not selfish but I do think you are a bit selfish being an athlete because Mm -hmm. certainly for my partner John you know we're not going out get that we do drink quite a bit but probably not as much (laughs) as not as much as we might do or go out all the time do you know and I I, I never see my mum and dad or his parents or my sister or my nephew 
never see him because I literally don't have time and it's not a mm. nine to five job. It's you get up and swim in the morning, but then you're doing something late at night and you know, you've got two hours off, but it's randomly at 10 till 12 in the afternoon. You can't have time to go. Mm. To so yeah, you really quite isolated um and it is a big committee um, and it's funny because most people like don't know the sport will speak to you and say oh it's it's great you can do your hobby like and, and they think that you know they'll say do you want to meet up and i think no i ain't got time like i'm probably yeah busier than you <laughs> yeah but like it is it is your hobby but when you're told to do something or you, you feel like you have to to earn money it suddenly becomes not as fun you know, I really liked reading, but then when I'm told to read a book at school or uni, it, you just don't enjoy it, do you? Because you're yeah. forced to do it. So y- your your gold medalist winning team, it was you, George Taylor Brown, Alex Yee and Johnny Brownlee. Yeah. How did you, how did, so how were you guys picked for that? Did you do individual races or did they sort of figure out how you work as a team? Um, I think they kind of had a pre-idea of, of who they'd mm-hmm. like just because of the way the race goes and who's got so like I, I'm a better swimmer so and the women that year go first so there's loads of different things about like who would fit well in certain places but they didn't actually pick it until after the individual Um, I think that'll change as the years go on because it was mm-hmm. the first time it's been in the Olympic Games so I think they'll start to pre-select before in in coming years but this this year they they waited till the individual was over and certainly because in Tokyo it was so hot that you know you could you could have heat exhaustion and that Mm -hmm. athlete wouldn't be at a race or whatever so yeah we only found out a couple of days after the individual right Um, so like there was it has to be the um, athletes that have done the individual so there were three men and three women that did mm-hmm. the individual so it was all always knew it was going to be out of us so there was only one on each that wouldn't go so we yeah. all had to kind of prep for it and recover and do all that mm-hmm. so. and how does the relay work do you all do a swim bike run one after another or does one pen one person the bike how, how does that work yeah we all do a mini triathlon so yeah swim bike mm-hmm. run and then you tag and then the so it go it went me first then I mm-hmm. tagged to Johnny, then it went Georgia, then Alex uh, finished it. So yeah, you all do a mini triathlon, and that's what that's why it's more pressure because it's really obvious if you have a bad leg, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I believe me, I've done it before. I tried the triathlon uh, relay once and got battered in the swim, pretty much nearly drowned, and then <laughs> lost it. And we all had to do. We were like last in the race and we all had to just go around on our own it were oh own. no <laughs> like, yeah, you can really mess it up and um but thankfully everything went to plan that day yeah and you ended up winning gold what was that feeling like god i tell you what I, the best feeling was when i slapped johnny's hand and i'd finished my section because i just thought thank god for that like <laughs> what do you do? and to be honest i knew from then, when when I finished my leg, mm-hmm. personally, I thought we won it because yeah. in my eyes, I was the, the the person that could probably do something wrong or have a bit of an issue. <laughs> just you always do when it's your own, <laughs> you know, like, you're like just self doubt. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I was confident as soon as we finished. I thought I can't believe it. We We're won. Be <laughs> <laughs> really big headed. I'd never be like that as an individual, but. I had so much, I just knew that they would do the job and um, yeah, we did and everything because loads can go wrong. There's loads of transitions, you know, like when you come from mm-hmm. the swim to the bike, you can not get your helmet on or drop things or miss the yeah. path. There's loads of things that can happen, but for some reason, I think we were all so relaxed. It just flowed and we managed to win. But Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So have you ever thought about your plans for after triathlon? Would you want to go into coaching or maybe do your own podcast? You're <laughs> very chatty. I, I think you'd be good at it. <laughs> no, yeah, but I can chat, but I can't ask the questions. I'd be like, we have some tea. It's good to be forward thinking. I don't know how you think of the next question, but um, I, I, I've not actually 
I'm starting to kind of think of things. It's weird because recently I did my level two coaching. Prior mm-hmm. to that, if someone said, do you want to be a coach? I'd be like, I'm not going to coach. No way. I couldn't do it because I, I find it difficult to like describe in words, you know, like explain mm-hmm. to somebody what to do. Yeah. You know, like if you're a Pilates teacher and you have to say, put this on this, hand, left hand on that, I'd be like, yeah. getting it all wrong. <laughs> but anyway, I thought, no, not for me. Did the course, loved it. And I thought, mm-hmm. actually, I would, I'd really like this. And it was so nice to have um, like a something that I know everything about. You know, we were mm. learning things and all the things that other people will be learning that is new to them. It's like, God, that's so simple. Because like, we know yeah. so much about the sport and naturally I just know it and I don't realise how much I know. Mm. So I just thought, God, this is actually something I could do. So I might go into coaching. I'll have a, I'll see. But um, yeah, it did did make me think I could probably enjoy it. And I did, you know, when we did practicals and stuff, I thought, this is great. Just mm. And I don't know. So yeah. I think you'd be like, great. I think you'd be great because if you're telling an athlete, oh, you've got to do, I don't know, 50, 100 metres swim every 90 seconds. If, if any other person told them to do that, they'd be like, absolutely not. But you've done stuff like that and more. So, <laughs> yes. you know, so I think that they think, exactly. Yeah. If you want to be like me, <laughs> Olympic gold medal, you've got to do it. That's true, yeah. I definitely think I'd go for the, like, older, though. I don't know if I could do with kids. <laughs> I just haven't got the report. I feel sorry for them. <laughs> <laughs> I'd really struggle, I think. So, yeah, maybe. Um other than that, I'm not, yeah, I've not really thought about it. Um, yeah, it's difficult when you've not, I've not really, I've not been to university. I've not got any sort of qualifications or ideas of what I'd want. And now I've got all this, these opportunities. It's like, oh, you think you'd have more of an idea, but in fact, it's yeah quite difficult. Well, I think you should take some time to get a massage every day. Just eat whatever you want and enjoy it. Enjoy not not pushing yourself for hours a week. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's true. I'll just be a, I'll just balloon. <laughs> well, <laughs> Jess, thank you. <laughs> Jess, thank you very much for taking the time to come on today. I really appreciate it. Oh, not a problem. Thanks for having me. It was really good. You're a good little 